In this video, we're going to look at working with discrete probability distributions in Excel. So one of the first things we like to do with discrete probability distributions is officially do the distribution. And in order to do a discrete probability distribution, you need to have two columns, which is the values of the random variable, so all of our x values, and then the probability that each of those random variables occur, so the p of x's. So the x and the p of x's together make a probability distribution. But in this column, or in this chart, we have information about the number of classes that randomly selected students are taking this semester, and then how many people responded that they're taking that number of classes. So we've got frequencies, we need to calculate the probability. To do this, we're going to sum our frequencies to see how many students are we working with. And then we're going to take each frequency divided by the total. So each frequency divided by the 91 total students that we're working with. And so we can see that right at 11% of students are taking one class. And we can drag that down to get the probability for each number of classes. So we can see about 16% of students are taking two classes, about 37% of students are taking three classes, and so on. So our probability distribution is made up of the x column, which is the different values of our random variable, and then the p of x column, which is the probability that each of those values occur. And we should check, in order to be valid, all of the probabilities need to be between 0 and 1, which they are, and the sum of the probabilities needs to equal 1 to show that we have everything accounted for, which it does. To turn this into a probability histogram, we start by highlighting the probabilities, and these will be the same steps that we did back when we made histograms in Chapter 2. So we highlight the probabilities, and then insert your bar graph, get the basic 2D column option, change your quick layout to layout 8, and then we can title and label this. Let's see, down in the horizontal axis, we have, oh, stop Excel. What did it just do? Sometimes it gets a little clicky. All right. We change our chart to layout 8. So down here we have the number of classes that students are taking. And then we have the probability going up the side. And so this chart is showing us the answer to how many classes are people taking. Now, one thing to be aware of is often we need to adjust the horizontal axis by right-clicking on one of those numbers and going to select data and then adjusting the horizontal axis labels. In this case, the bars actually do match up. The first bar we want to represent one class, second bar representing two classes and so on. So this one's fine, but often you will have to adjust the horizontal axis. And then one other thing I like to do is right-click on one of the bars and add data labels so we can see the exact height of each bar. I think it makes the graph cleaner. All right, so then we also need to find the mean and the standard deviation of our probability distribution. And we cannot use the average and STDEV functions in Excel. Those only work on sets of data, and we don't have data here. We have probabilities. So in order to find the mean, what we're going to have to do is calculate x times p of x and sum them up. That's the formula for the mean of a probability distribution. It's x times p of x and then sum them up. So I'm going to do a new column, which I'm going to label x times p of x. I hit equals, click on my x value, times the p of x. And then hit enter. And then I'll drag that down. And at the bottom, I'm going to sum my x times p of x's. And so this tells us that the mean of our probability distribution, which is the exact same thing as the average, is 3.01 meaning on average, students are taking three classes a semester based on this sample. So then to get standard deviation, we've got to do x minus mu squared times p of x. And when we sum x minus mu squared times p of x, it technically gives us the variance, and then we'll have to square root the variance to get standard deviation. So we do equals parenthesis, go click on your first x value, minus your mean, and make sure you hit F4 right away so that we lock it in. Oh, hit the wrong button. F4, so that we lock it in. We don't want the value of mean to change. So equals parenthesis x minus your mean squared times its probability. So we've got x minus mu squared times p of x. And then we can drag that down. 
And if we sum our x minus mu squared times p of x, this gives us our variance. So the sum of x minus mu squared times p of x gives us our variance. And so to get our standard deviation, we take the square root, which in Excel is equal SQRT parenthesis of variance. We take the square root of variance to get standard deviation, and this tells us approximately how spread out is the data. So we have a standard deviation of about one. So we could go back to the empirical rule that we learned about in the last unit and say that we have about 68% of our data between one standard deviation of the mean we have about 95% of our data within two standard deviations of the mean, and so on.